Myra Ray is a well-known children's book writer. Her stories revolve around a caterpillar, and the books have her own illustrations. She is madly in love with her fiancé John. Unfortunately John died by a drunk driver hits him on the road. After John's tragic death, she moves back with her family to their house in the countryside. Two years later, she decides to return to the city at her sister Susie's apartment. Susie shares a box of stuff Myra had of John. She gets sentimental thinking about her memories related to them. She also finds a ring inside and wears it. Then, she decides to spend the night drinking wine. She decides to send a text on John's phone, Myra's texts reach John's cell number. Rob got John's contact number after John's death. Meanwhile, we meet Rob Burns works at a firm and writes as a music critic. He received love messages strange but decides not to respond. While Myra keeps writing down her feelings, the books are supposed to be for children her publisher, Gina, finds those depressing books impossible to sell. Which kid would want to see a crying caterpillar? That's why she tells Myra to write something that would be more joyful instead. Meanwhile, Rob assumes that Lisa is the person texting him and confronts her about it. Lisa reveals that she isn't the person texting him. He later goes to Celine's press conference and interrupts it with a text from Myra. He also reveals his cynical outlook toward love. Celine says how he does not understand anything about love. On the other hand, Susie creates Myra's profile on Bumble and arranges a date for her. Myra keeps texting on John's phone, which informs Rob about the date. Billy joins him and thinks it might as well be a man texting him. Myra walks in to find a gym bro Joel and struggles to find a connection with him. She still gets in a cab with him. He thinks it is a sign that they will have sex. So, she throws him out. The next day, Rob goes to meet Celine for an interview. He tells her that he might have feelings for someone. Rob shows the texts to Celine, Celine motivates him to pursue his love. Rob goes to watch an enactment of Orpheus and Eurydice. Afterward, he finds Myra walking out and gets mesmerized by her. Rob envisions this scene as a romantic. They exchange names and numbers, and she leaves. He gives her a different number than John's. Rob googles her name and finds out about her work. He also realizes that she was texting her dead John all this time. Myra calls him to ask him out on a date. Later at dinner, Rob initially thinks he should tell her the truth about John's number but decides to wait on it. They have a romantic night and find plenty of things in connection. While he goes in the shower, she notices texts messages are wrote to John. She gets upset and leaves his house. He tries to apologize but she thinks it is too late for it. Myra cuts communication with Rob. Some days later Rob's published article. He shares his feelings toward Myra. Susie says that Myra should offer him another chance. Celine calls her to say the same thing. So, the two get together at the end of the tale. 